This is sort of a loaded question, in a way. It's something I'm curious about. Go right ahead. Apropos of what you just said regarding slavery and how that actually relates to the raising of the West. R-A-Z-I-N-G. Yes, that raising of the West. Although I suppose the other is true, too. <laughs> raising and lowering at the same time. But this has a tremendous effect on the last of the so-called traditional peoples, the indigenous peoples, who still inhabit the southwestern landscapes, specifically the Puebloans and the Navajos and the Papagos and the Pimas. And I wonder if you'd care to give your thoughts and feelings with regard to the effect of this on those people. And also, what can we learn from these people, if anything, in our own culture, which is no longer at all traditionally oriented within that particular context of tradition? I think the best thing we could do for the traditional people is to let them bloody well alone, keep our greedy hands off their land and off their lives, if that were possible. But most of them now are shut up in little enclaves within the industrial society, and most of them have been so corrupted by our society that they have become dependent upon it. Well, it appears to me that there are very few genuinely traditional cultures left, perhaps a few tribes down in the Amazonian jungle that still lead self-reliant lives, maybe in New Guinea, and the distant hills of the Philippines. This is something you and I don't fully agree on. The American Indians, it seems to me, have almost been assimilated into our culture. I realize there are a few pockets of the traditional culture still left in the reservations, but it appears to me that they are a small and diminishing minority, not likely to survive much longer. Ideally, I would say we should declare the Papago Reservation and the Navajo Reservation as fully independent nations and try to simply let them alone. But it's too late for that. It wouldn't, couldn't possibly work. The world has become too interdependent now. So somehow the Papagos and the Navajos, to name only those two tribes, are going to have to work out a decent life for themselves within American society somehow. And it seems to me that the majority of them are facing the same difficulties that the rest of us white Americans are facing, and the blacks and the Hispanics how to survive in a crackpot economy, a crazy industrial empire that the managers cannot manage and the economists cannot comprehend. Most of the American Indians have been reduced to the role of unemployed working people, red-skinned rednecks, like my brother Hoots. I would love to see the traditional cultures survive, but unless our industrial economy collapses in the near future, I don't think they will. Take the Tara Humara of Mexico, I was last down there in the Sierra Madres almost 10 years ago. And even then, the Tara Humara's way of life was clearly being threatened, constricted, closed in upon by massive road building schemes, by heavy logging in the mountains that bound to erode those tiny little milpas, those little corn patches down in the canyons that the Tara Humara's used to depend on, maybe still do. Even then, a lot of them have been reduced to the role of pandering to tourists, selling trinkets to the passing tourist trade. I think they're in a pretty bad situation. I don't think their chances for survival as a culture are at all good. I think they'll survive as human beings. Their chances just to keep on living and reproducing are about as good as those of the rest of us. But as tribes, as groups, they don't seem to be able to compete very well with this in this mad rat race that most of us are dedicated to. And in order to do so, they would have to probably abandon most of the traditional culture. They would have to become ambitious, get their kids into college and see to it that they graduate and take up the dreary trades of computer programming and manufacturing that most Americans are already condemned to. I don't think a traditional culture can survive when it's surrounded by a modern, aggressive, expanding industrial culture. Wish it could. Because I agree with you that there's much they could teach us. There's much we could learn from them. And already have learned from them, but are not using. Much has been written about this, of course. Tons of books. And most of us lament the passing of the old American Indian way of life. 
we romanticize it now and glorify it, but it's mostly gone. Myself, I think I would have loved to have been a 19th century, early 19th century Sioux or Arapaho or Cheyenne, part of that great, magnificent horse and buffalo hunting way of life. It must have been one of the glories of human life, like they say classical Greece was, which I doubt. That too was a society dependent on slavery. But the Indians of the plains, for a brief two or three centuries, had a wonderful way of life based on the horse and the buffalo and self-reliant tribes and clans and a sustaining way of life. It was not expanding at such a rapid rate that it was destroying its own resource base. It could probably have continued for thousands of years if the European culture had not come along and destroyed it.